What's up, YouTube? Back with another video. Today, man, I'm really excited to bring to you guys another... <laughs> I do this too much, I know. Another new ride. And as you can see in the background, it needs no introduction. You already know what it is. I have a 2020 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon and the Bikini Pearl Blue colorway. And I'm going to tell you guys something off bat. The colorway on this car is sick. It is, to me, the best looking Jeep I've seen, I think, personally, my opinion, ever. And I knew it was gonna look good. I didn't know it was gonna look this good until I actually saw it in person. And so I have a whole long story on how I acquired this car. Um, it is not brand new. It's a 2020 and when I bought it, it had about 4,000 miles on it So it's technically still brand new. So whoever the previous owner was took care of it But um, yeah, it's it's awesome. It, it is it is awesome up and down and so uh, but this video isn't about that I'm not here to really show off my car Basically what I'm here to do is to help people who are in the process of buying a Wrangler to help you guys make decisions on what accessories, the trim, the engine, and things of that nature to help you guys uh, make an informed decision. And again, before I start this video, these are my opinions. I learned my lesson last time when I did my Tacoma review and all the mods I did on it, how everybody wanted to get on me about this and that. Listen, you guys have your opinion. This is my channel. I have my opinion. I'm going to give you the best advice that I can to help you make an informed decision about buying a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, you know, you can watch all kind of videos out there about why people love their Jeeps or why they hate their Jeeps. But the first thing I recommend that you do is do the research and realize that when you buy one of these vehicles, what you're getting yourself into. So for example, you know, you should already know that in a matter of time, there are going to be some type of leaks, whether you got a soft top, hard top, one touch top, whatever the case may be. They're just known for doing that. You should know that the windshields aren't the best and that eventually rock chips will crack the windshield pretty easily on these vehicles. You should realize that, you know, doing high speeds, you might have a little rattling on the hood, you know, with the movement of the hood because it doesn't close like normal hoods close on other cars. So there's just certain things you should know about this vehicle before you buy it. Half of the people who do those 10 things I hate about Jeep videos are naming the things that you should already know before you buy the Jeep. So my main thing is, is my advice to you, do the research first and then realize if this is the vehicle that you want. Because yes, there's a lot of pros to it, but there's a lot of cons as well. But if this is still what you want to go with, keep watching the video. I'm going to help you make your informed decision about what you should buy. Now, before we move on, let me just show you what I got. I, I got the engine up right now because uh put a lot of I've already put about 3,000 miles in this vehicle. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into that. But man, the color on this is, is just crazy. And this camera is not doing it justice. I already got a bunch of junk in there because I've been Christmas shopping and everything. So please just disregard all my stuff in there. But I uh, just want to show you the inside. Uh, this does have the leather, has the, uh, the red dash and all of this stuff. I've already put some mods in here. I'm not going to go over those in this video. This is just to help people make an informed decision on what type of Jeep they want and what they should go for and what to look for um, when buying a Jeep Wrangler. So first thing, you're interested in your Jeep. You pretty much know what you want. You probably already decided what year you want, if you want it brand new, if you want it slightly used, whatever the case may be. The thing about Jeeps in this time and day when it comes to the pandemic, used Jeeps hold their value very, very well, especially if they've been taken care of and if it has low mileage. So don't be surprised if you buy anywhere from a 2019, 2020, 2021, and it's not too much of a difference from a brand new 2022 that you can order from the dealership. They just hold their value very, very well. Um, but here's my thing right now there's a waiting list on those builds if you decide to build your brand new one at the dealership and even the the one the the used ones don't even stay in in stock that long so my advice number one is decide on what you want and you better try to jump on it pretty quick because they're selling like hotcakes as they always have before so when looking at the Wrangler the first thing I wanted to do in my personal opinion was to decide on which 
color that I wanted and which trim that I wanted. Those are my two important things first. So looking at the Jeeps, um, I like different colors. To me, the Jeep is a fun car. It's a car that I would want a colorway to pop. I want it to stand out. I want a loud color on the Jeep. I want something where people was like, oh, wow, did you see that? You know, something like that on it because it's a fun car. It should have that. It's kind of like an exotic sports car. You see exotic sports cars, you know, you don't see a lot of traditional colors. You see the line, the, the electric greens, the hot pinks and the, you know, screaming yellows and all that type stuff on there. So um, I think it's the same thing with a Jeep. With a fun vehicle like this, I think color pops and, 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 it, and it should go along with the actual uh, Jeep itself. And so I narrowed it down to a few colorways. Um, I'm not going to go into all the ones that I was interested in. And then I narrowed it down to just two. The mojito green, the bikini blue. And so um, I was really close to buying a uh, mojito green one, but uh, it was something about the blue that just kept calling me. So when I looked at this particular vehicle, it had about $6,000 more options in it than the mojito green one that I saw did. And the mojito green was the same price. So $6,000 more options, I'm going with the blue one. So I decided to go with the bikini blue. They no longer make this color. I think 2020 was the last year they made it. So they were hard to find at that time. Uh, I've seen about four or five in my area, but uh, you know now they're, they're... It never fails. I do a video and I mean, airplane will just fly down the street, a big you know crane will just come drive by, dogs barking, like it just never fails, man. I, I just can't make a video without noise going on in the background. Anyway. So, uh, so yeah, narrowed it down to, um, to the bikini blue colorway. Um, when it comes to the trim, I always wanted the Rubicon. Uh, was never really interested in the Sport or the Sport S or the Sahara. Uh, the Rubicon was the one I've always wanted um, just because of the aggressive look. And of course, it's already got off-road capabilities. And so it's just the one that I personally wanted. Now, when it comes to you, you need to make a choice on what trim is gonna best fit you. One thing that I hate hearing is people who complain about Jeeps saying that, oh, they're rough riding, oh, they don't, they, they don't, they're not comfortable with the steering, or oh, it's just, it's just not a, a daily driver, but yet they got the most off-road version of the Jeep that they can. They do make Jeeps that are built more so for street um, or for daily driving rather than the off-road version. So if that's something that you're interested in, that might be the trim that you want to get instead of the more 4x4 off-roading. And you just have to research the trim levels. I'm not gonna go over each trim level. That is completely up to you to decide, but you can do your own research on which trim level is best for you. And again, you don't have to get a $60,000 Jeep you know, to, to have fun and do some of the same capabilities as the more expensive Jeeps. You can get the basic model and still take the doors off, still take the top down, just like any of them. So you know, don't think you gotta spend a whole lot of money uh, to get the more top of the line one when you can get the more entry level ones as well and still have fun. The basis of this vehicle is to have fun in it. That is why people take the doors off. That is why people take the tops off. And I'm gonna make up a new word. I'm gonna use it often in this video. The convertibleness of it is what really makes it stand out. So once you decide your trim level, once you got your color, now we start looking at more of the options that people have problems deciding on um, when it comes to this vehicle. And with the JLs, you have a lot of options to choose from, just like all the other Jeeps in the past, and sure, I'm sure in the future. So first thing a lot of people want to ask, uh, what top should I go with? Should I go with the hard top or the soft top? My opinion, this is my opinion, um, it depends on what other options are with the vehicle and what you're gonna use your vehicle for. And I'm gonna say that a lot. But I'm just being honest with you about that. So, for example, I found this vehicle with all the options I wanted and it had a hard top. If it would have had a soft top, I would have been okay with that as well because for what I need it for, I'm okay with either top. Um, if you buy these new and you build your own Jeep, I personally recommend getting the dual top, the soft top and the hard top together. But if you had to choose one, uh, I would say I would go with the hard top first. And this is my reason why. If you decide to get a soft top or one of those half soft top uh, models, 
you can do that later on and usually the soft tops usually the soft tops are a lot cheaper than the hard top versions so if you can find one that has a hard top already on it that is going to be your bonus and then you can get something else later on down the line that's not as expensive now if you don't have storage area in your garage or at your house for a hard top then your soft top is going to be a better option for you as well so you got to keep that in mind the storage space of this thing if you decide to take it off where are you going to put that if you're not going to take it off that much then the hard top will probably be a better option for you as well and when it comes to leaks from my understanding you're going to get a leak here and there at, at a certain point in time i haven't had any leaks yet i've went ran it through the car wash twice um but if you do i mean that's going to happen regardless of what top you have so uh that's my recommendation hard top will be first soft top will be second but my number one choice would be to get both, to be honest with you, and that's called the dual top option if you're able to find one with that or order one with that. Now there's also a more expensive option which is called the one touch top, which is actually the one that you hit the button and the whole top goes back, um, retracts back into the trunk space, I mean the cargo area. Those are really cool. Uh, a friend of mine actually showed me one. She had a brand new Jeep with it. I love it. I think it's actually, one of the best options but it has two major drawbacks for me personally on why i wouldn't get it number one is the cost if you build one that's a forty one hundred dollar option i'm sorry i don't see any rooftop or sunroof worth forty one hundred dollars i just can't see it and i understand that may roll into a loan but technically you're still paying for that with interest i cannot see paying forty one hundred dollars i mean you just think about if you had $100 bills and you count out $4,100, you're getting ready to spend all of that on a sunroof. I, I personally can't do it. That's my major drawback for it. But now, if this Jeep would have came with it, I would have been perfectly happy with it. But, um, but it also would depend on the price of the vehicle as well. But now, when also another con to that... Are you serious? What is that? What is that noise? I got people racing cars down the street. Neighbors getting ready to just cut everybody's yard. Like, this is crazy. Like, it never felt like, you guys don't realize when I make a video and post it, you think this is like the one cut deal. No, sometimes it takes months to make a video because of stuff like this. People wanting to do stuff and just, anyway. Um, where was I at? Oh, the soft top. The other con about the soft top, the one touch soft top is, uh, the one touch top, I'm sorry, is, um, yeah, it can be removed but it takes a lot more work to get it removed. There's a lot more electronics associated with it. And most people who get that top don't take it off. So it defeats the point of the Jeep being a convertible vehicle. And I don't wanna deal with that. If I'm paying that much money for something and I can't even take it off as easy as I can the regular hard top, you know, that, that's gonna be a drawback for me as well. So those are my biggest two cons, but the biggest pro of that Especially here in Florida, if it rains at any point in time, you just hit a button and it retracts. Like you don't even have to get out, put on a cover or try to find somewhere where you can get underneath like a bridge or something like you're good to go. So with that being said, that's a big pro, though. That's a huge pro. Um, but still, the two cons outweigh the pro for me, my personal opinion. But if you have it to each is their own, I think it's still a, a great option. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really cool. Check it out. You know first if you haven't played with the one touch because that might be something that you're interested in especially if you're not going to take the doors off or make it a convertible you know that much so uh again just to recap the soft top hard top debate i would suggest hard top first soft top second and if you can afford it hey go with the one touch uh but just know that it's not going to be that easy to become a convertible and you're going to spend a lot of money on it um but hey if that's not a problem for you that would be my number one if those two issues aren't issues with you. If you got the money like that, and if you're going to not take the top off that much, the one touch will definitely be for you. Next thing people want to ask, uh, leather or not. Now, this one does come with leather, but now it also, to me, it really didn't matter. If, this if I would have saved 1500 or or 1000 bucks and not got the leather option, I would be okay with that. The Jeeps inside of these are supposed to be waterproof. From my understanding, the fabric seats are very, very well made. Um, and just 
slightly not as comfortable as the leather, but close to it. So I would have been okay with that uh, because I normally put leather seat covers over the driver's seat anyway, just to protect the seat, whether it's leather or not. I always put an additional car seat over the driver's seat because it's so much wear and tear of getting in and out of the vehicle. Um, I just protect that that one seat more than any of the other seats. So it, it really doesn't matter with me. So that's just a personal preference for you. If you like leather, if you want that luxurious feel, or if you just want that more softer feel in your butt, then hey, go with the leather. But if you're okay, you're doing a lot of off-roading or that doesn't really matter to you, save a little bit of money, get the uh, the fabric, I think you'll be okay with that. The next option, uh, the infotainment system, the Uconnect system. Should I go with the eight inch or go with the seven inch? Um, of course, if you go with the eight inch, you gotta get the premium audio group that has the Alpine system in it. Highly recommend getting that. Number one, it's just a bigger screen bigger screen bigger viewing area it just helps it always um, especially when it comes to navigation uh, the premium audio group with the actual Alpine subwoofer and system in it sounds really really good I'm gonna make another video with all my mods and I'm gonna talk about that more in detail but now this is just a buying uh, video on, on trying to help people make a decision on what options to get. I will let you hear that video in an, I mean that uh, stereo in another video, just not in this one. But I highly recommend it. It does sound really good. A lot of people, you know, don't give it enough credit as they should, but I think it sounds great. Now, out of all of my stereos that come factory from my vehicles, I had a van actually that had a 21 speaker Harman Kardon theater system surround sound in it with the 800 watt amp and it came factory doesn't come close to something like that but it still sounds good uh especially when you have the enclosures and um when i'm sorry when you have the hard top and when you have the sound deadening mats inside the hard top and uh which leads me into that so i do recommend the larger eight inch screen now when building another option i'm just going to show you what i was talking about this is like a five or six hundred dollar option, which is the soundproofing mats that come into the hardtop. Now, do I think they're worth that much? Absolutely not. Six hundred dollars for that is crazy. If you can afford them, and it's not a problem. Get them. But I would try to look at some aftermarket ones to see if they're cheaper because, yeah, I definitely think it does make a difference. But I think you could probably work something out where you can find something a little bit cheaper than that than buying the the uh, the factory ones. Um, so that's kind of on the fence, uh, but I have it. it came with the vehicle, so it is what it is. So the other thing that people want to uh, usually wonder, which I think is the biggest thing, is the color, fenders and rooftop. Should I get it with the colors or should I get it with the more uh, matte black uh, plastic rather than getting the actual uh, body fenders to match the actual color of the vehicle? This one came this way, I think it's fine. For me personally, I think having all of this, the color of the body is just too much. I don't care what color it is. In my personal opinion, I think there needs to be some color blocking. So I have the black top, which I think is great. I have... I have the black top, which I think is great. Um, and I also have the uh, fenders to match the color of the body, which I think is a, is a pretty good, uh, good mix. Um, to me, I don't recommend getting everything all the same color as the car. I think it's just too much. But again, that's up to you. Some people like that and, and it looks good, you know, so. Um, but I would have something black. Like if, if the roof happened to be the same color of this, I would hope that the fenders were black. And of course, I'm putting in the black grill just to throw it off a little bit. But in this case, in scenario, it's the reverse. And so that's going to be a personal preference of yours. But I personally would have something to color block some of the body color of the vehicle. Next, um, if you can try to get your vehicle with the corning glass, I don't I don't have the corning glass on this particular one. Um, not sure if it's because you know it's a 2020, but if you're building one of these or you can find a newer model with the corning glass, get that because it definitely will help protect your windshield a lot more uh, than the ones without the corning glass, the gorilla glass. Now, um, the next thing, 
the engine. Now, this is the biggest debate right now on people buying Jeeps is which engine should I get? Now, there's a lot of engines out there for these new model JL Jeeps. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion, and this is my opinion. If you don't like it, that's fine. There's no need in commenting to let me know you don't like it. I'm just letting you know how I feel. My number one engine choice will be the Hemi. But of course, I'm not in that baller category to afford a ninety dollars to $100,000 Jeep Wrangler, so I can't do that. But if I could do that and money wasn't an object, I would go for the Hemi. Why? It's the fastest Wrangler ever produced. Why not? Um, but I'm not balling like that. But if you're balling like that, get the Hemi engine. If not, if you like me, like most people, that's not even in the in the in the in the category. So we're just gonna put the Hemi to the side. We're not even gonna really talk about the Hemi right now. So let's get back to the reality then. What most of us are buying. You have your uh, diesel engine choice. You have your 4 by e hybrid choice. You have your uh, uh, four cylinder. Uh, turbo and then you have your v6 pinstar engine so those are your choices right now so i'm just going to go down the list in no particular order but i'm going to save uh my first choice for last so let's talk about hmm, let's talk about the hybrid first let's talk about the four by e this is what i want to tell everyone out there who's interested in buying that vehicle first off let me let me, before, let me say this before i even go into that everyone that buys a jeep is going to say positive things about their engine because they love their Jeep. So you're not going to have people complaining about the 4xe when they just spent all that money buying it. You're not going to have people complaining about, you know, the diesel after they spent all that money buying it. So you're probably not going to get a lot of truthful people telling you how they feel right now. Um, but I'm just going to be honest on, on how I feel about the hybrid. I've had three hybrid vehicles in my life. If you've never had a hybrid vehicle, let me explain something to you. All of the torque that people talk about when it comes to the hybrids, that's not limited to Jeep. That's with all electric vehicles. That's what an electric battery does. It'll give the car more torque. My van was a hybrid. The last vehicle, the last hybrid I had was a Pacifica. That thing got up acceleration wise. I could be at a light and I gun it, and I guarantee you I would take out a lot of cars acceleration wise, you know, for a little while at least, um, and they would be shot because of the speed of that of that big van. Um, but that's when it was on, running on the electric battery. My Pacifica was rated at 40 miles per charge. The Jeep 4xe, from my understanding, is rated, I think, 25 miles per charge. First off, the Pacifica is a Chrysler product as well. And even with the other hybrids I've had, let's cut off five off that number off tops. My vehicle probably produced about about 35 miles per charge. I'm assuming the Jeep Hybrid would do the same thing. I would say it's gonna produce probably about 20 miles per charge. To me personally, that is not enough mileage to justify having a hybrid vehicle. If you were living and only going to be driving this car a couple of times a week or it's your weekend car and you're in a radius where you're just going to the bank, going to get something to eat, you know, going to see a movie, going to the grocery store, you're just running errands, then yeah, the hybrid may be for you. But if you do any type of traveling to where you're going out of town, you're going, if you're going past that 20 mile mark, it really doesn't justify the price of what you're paying. Uh, which I believe is like an extra seven or eight thousand for that for that model um, to only go twenty miles per charge. To me, I would never buy a hybrid vehicle again unless I can get an hour worth of driving without using fuel. So that means I would need a vehicle that produces at least seventy miles per charge. That technology eventually will come. It's not here yet, but until then, I'm not buying another hybrid until I get that type of mileage per charge. So for me, that reason alone, the hybrid is not in the picture. I would put that off unless you just really want a hybrid. If you want the tax credit uh, and you just you know think that you're not going to really be driving that much in the vehicle, that might be for you. But 20 miles per charge is not a lot at all. You will burn through that probably in about 10 minutes worth of driving. And then you're going to be like, well, what, what happened? Like, what? I'm using gas already, you know? So just kind of something to think about. Uh, I, I would kind of hold off on the hybrid for now. I'm sure it's still a great vehicle. 
It's cool to have a hybrid Jeep, but wait until they get the mileage a little bit higher up before you go that route. Now, let's go into the diesel. So, here's the thing. Let's, let's talk about what diesels are for. When you think of diesel trucks, when you think of diesel 4x4 pickups, you know, they're for hauling stuff. They're for towing and hauling. And so, if you have something that you're towing or hauling, or hauling in your Jeep, then I highly recommend the diesel. If you have a boat, jet skis, you know, you got some horses on the back of the trailer, whatever the case may be, yes, the diesel is going to be for you. It produces more torque. If you're doing a lot of four x four off roading, I recommend the diesel. Of course, it's going to get you up those rocks and boulders and inclines and all of that fun stuff. Hey, get it. That's what it's for. Other than no two, those two reasons, that's the only reason I would recommend the diesel. Unless you just want the second big boy, which the big boy is the Hemi. Unless you just want the second big boy G engine of the Jeep, then I understand that too. Um, a lot of times people just want the more powerful, bigger engine. There's no reason as to why. I mean, let's look at why all these people got Hellcats and Demons. Do we really need them? No, but we want more power. And that's what we are about when it comes to uh, fast cars and trucks. And so... Hey, I get it if that's what you want, but let's look at what they're really for, which is, you know, for towing and hauling and off-roading. So if you don't have anything to tow and you're not going to put this vehicle on the off-road trail, uh, I probably would hold off. Um, but if you are going to do those, if you, if you have those two reasons as to why you want the diesel, then I think the diesel will be a good choice. First of all, I don't think any of these engines are bad engines. I think you can go with any of these and be fine. But I'm just letting you know the reasons as to why you may want to get one of these engines or, my, or why you may not want to get one of these engines. Next up, um, let's talk about the uh, four-cylinder turbo. This is what I have. I wanted the V6, the Pinstar. That's the engine that I've actually always wanted with the Jeep. I rem but I'll talk about that in a minute. But the 2.0, uh, the 2.0 liter turbo, I will say this thing gets up. And I've taken this thing to the mountains already. I'm, I've been impressed with the acceleration. I've been impressed with the power. I've been impressed with the handling so far with this with this turbo engine. Uh, I hope long term it lasts and everything stays fine with it. But again, I have a warranty, so I'm not upset about that. But we'll um, we'll see how it goes when it comes to that engine. The first engine I would have chose is the V6 Pinstar, and that's because of the reliability of it. I remember, I think it was back in 2000, and if I'm a year or two off, please just bear with me. I don't remember exactly. But I think it was 2007 or 2008 is when they introduced the Pinstar engine. Because I was looking at Jeeps then, and I remember reading people saying that, you know, wait until the Pinstar comes out, wait till the Pinstar comes out, don't buy a Jeep until that. I waited until that came out, but by that time, my interests were in other vehicles, so I kind of put the Jeep to, us, to the side for a while. But I always remember that um, everyone was ranting and raving about that Pinstar engine. And so that's the reason why I wanted that one. Uh, I think that is probably your safest bet overall. If that's the engine that I could choose, uh, that would be the one that I would get. If I were to build a Jeep right now, I would go with the V6 Pinstar just to play it safe. But again, you can't go wrong with any of these. And I think you'll be safe choosing any of these engines um, that may come along with your used Jeep or even if it's a new Jeep. Uh, I would go with the V6. But again, it's your choice, it's your call, and so uh, you just have to make decision on what's what's best for you guys. Now, as far as me, um, I'm going to be using this Jeep for daily driving. This is my day-to-day, back-to-work, back-home uh, vehicle. It is definitely gonna be a convertible uh, in the spring and summer, and even most of the fall. Uh, so it will, the top will come down, the doors will come off. Um, Off-roading, I would probably say a little bit because I actually live not too far from a couple of trails that I've looked up. So it will be some, some off-road, but nothing like I'm not going over boulders. I'm not taking this to Utah. I'm not taking this to the Rubicon Trail. None of that type stuff. I know that's what it's built for, but that's just not what I'm going to use it for. Uh, but it will go on some off-roads from time to time here and there, but nothing too crazy or nothing, you know, that's going to... Uh, to damage the Jeep. And the main reason why the paint is too pretty. This is a pretty vehicle. I am not going to get this. I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, 
Uh, that's the only options I can think of. Hopefully this will help you guys make some uh, decisions on, on, on what options you want, what options you should go with. Uh, mine also has the steel bumper kit on it. Um, do you need a steel bumper? Maybe, maybe not. For the price of it, it is expensive, but it just gives me comfort knowing that if I hit something, I'll probably do more damage to whatever I hit rather than it do more damage to the, to the, uh, to the Jeep. Uh, same thing with the rear. Someone were to run into me, they'll probably do more damage to their car than my car. But, or if I hit a deer, whatever the case may be, um, you know, it's something to think about whether or not you want something like that on it. Of course, it is heavier and adds more weight to the vehicle. Uh, trying to think what other options. The safety options, um, I only have the safety package. I don't have the advanced package, but uh, if I had to build a Jeep, I probably would buy that. Um, just because I've had it in my Pacifica and I think all of those things are really cool features and come in handy way more than you think they would. So definitely think about buying um, both of those safety packages. Uh, also, I have the uh, cold weather package. Don't need it here in Florida, but it came with it. Um, but when I take it out of town, yes, definitely comes in handy. The, the, the heated steering wheel, the heated seats. So, hey, I'm pretty happy with that, uh, that it did. You know come with with those options and again i did mention earlier that it did come with the leather seats um uh and the eight inch uh screen with the alpine system hard top came with the sound deadening mats inside the hard top uh what else do we have here i think that's that's about it that i can think of as far as uh as far as options um i made another video specifically for the type of floor mats that i bought for it so you can check that that video out and then I'm going to do another video that just kind of shows all the little small mods that I've done so far to it I don't plan on doing anything crazy with this thing I probably won't even get any um, side steps uh, or sliders I probably won't even lift it um, not that I don't want to but it's just that I don't know I see so many Jeeps that already have the same type of look. Like every Jeep I see here in Florida is lifted with the big tires. Um, a lot of them have the Angry Bird, you know, uh, grill on it and things of that nature. I just, I just want to keep the classic look of the Jeep. Uh, now I think stock actually stands out more than, you know, the, the more lifted Jeeps. Only because you see so many of them. It's almost like it's rare to see... Uh, a Jeep that stopped unless it's brand new and then you know most times when people get a brand new Jeep it only takes a little while before they you know upgrade it or mod it or lift it and so I kind of want to keep it as stock as I can for now I can't promise and say that's going to be forever hey I don't know I might not even keep this thing too long you just never know but I hope hope I do and I, I hope that um, I keep it as stock as I can you know for now as far as the outside goes uh, so yeah, other than that guys, just wanted to show you the new ride and uh, I will go more in details with this uh, on my next video when I go into the modifications. And again, I hope this helps you guys when it comes to buying a Jeep and make a decision on, um, on what you want. Alright, check you out in the next video. Hope you're doing well. Take care. Peace.